The place, Guinea, West Africa. Since the mid-70s, researchers have watched chimpanzees using stones to crack nuts. And not just any stone. They select rounded hammer stones, and the anvil often has a depression in the middle so that smooth nutshells don't roll off the edge and escape the hammer. The scene was played back to Kenzie so he could watch the chimpanzee's work. Did he relate to the scene? Had he learned from it? Not to be bested by mere chimpanzees, the bonobo took to the woods. First, a plentiful supply of hazelnuts. The roar of planes taking off from Atlanta's airport poses the contrast. Above, the latest in human technology. Below, an ape cracking nuts with a rock. For Kanzi, the task is not much of a challenge. No, I want you to slap it open. Good. Can you give that to me? Okay. But surely a quantum leap separates just using a rock and making it into a tool. Dr. Nicholas Toth, an archaeologist from the University of Indiana, would survive very well in the Stone Age. An accomplished stone tool maker, it was Toth's idea to have Kanzi make a blade. He devised this food store, securely fastened by a rope. Tugging the rope does nothing to release the food. It's not going to come that way. You having trouble with your tool? Dr. Toth showed Kanzi how to take a stone in each hand and strike them together to make a tool. A skilled stone napper can quickly make a sharp flint blade by hand without resorting to force. But Kanzi chose a more energetic method. Whatever works, use it. Kanzi was soon sawing a rope. Perhaps we just witnessed a replay of untold similar moments in our own human prehistory. In a very interesting way, by his own innovation, he learned that by throwing one stone against another, he could easily fracture them and produce sharp edges. This is something we never showed him. He learned on his own. Just uh, a few months after Kanzi started flaking stone, he learned to do this all by himself by throwing one stone against another. So this may be showing us some glimmerings of the origins of stone technology in human evolution. On one occasion, demands imposed by three months of filming caused human and bonobo tempers to flare. The producers asked Sue to put sentences to Tamuli to see if Kanzi would explain them to her. But Tamuli, who does not understand language, became frustrated. She began kicking Sue. Pound for pound, apes are five times as strong as humans. Even Tamuli is stronger than Sue, let alone Kanzi. With Sue trying to convey that she had misbehaved, Tamuli sought Kanzi's help. To his credit, Kanzi tried to arbitrate, keeping them apart. Tamuli is still unrepentant, and Sue? I'm not going to have it! Kanzi stepped between them mediating with his bulk, but the storm was almost spent. Timuli sat down and offered an apology. Sue, badly bruised, was mollified. Peace was restored. Removed from the compound this time, 
Sue tried again to involve Tamuli in conversation, and the Bonobo's reaction was very different. For one thing, she no longer seemed to feel frustrated and inadequate. For another, her big brother, Kanzi, tried to explain. Tamuli, look here. Tamuli, could you slap Kanzi? Tamuli, you. Slap Kanzi. You slap Kanzi. By example, Kanzi tried to teach Kanzi? Tamuli the meaning of the word. Tamuli, could you give Kanzi a hug? <laughs> Tamuli, could you groom Kanzi? He's asking you to groom him. Look, you put your hand up there. Isn't that nice? Go ahead, groom Kanzi. Look, he's showing you. Well, here, you go ahead. You take that one little butt. Here, Kanzi. Thank you for showing Tamuli. Many people say that only humans teach each other this way, but Kanzi appears to be trying to show his little sister what to do. Dr. Savage Rumbaugh writes of her work. With regard to their social behavior and group structure, bonobos were more like human beings than other living apes. At times, she writes, I seem to be staring into my own distant past and seeing quasi-persons. They were not people, but near people. As I watch bonobos even today, I cannot but sense that I am in the presence of the emergence of the human mind. Kanzi, buried treasure in Swahili. Not a month goes by without Kanzi revealing another facet of his character to those who know him best. promises to teach us much, much more about the journey of the human species from its ancient bones and shadows in the storied land of apes. Mm -hmm.